Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all-new Apple TV 4K 3rd generation for 2022. And this is a little bit different than before. It's now cheaper than it was before. It's 129 for 64 gigabytes, or this model you'll see is 128 gigabytes. It has Wi-Fi and Ethernet. So if you step up to the 128 model, it's only $20 more, so $149, which is down $30 from last year. So they've lowered the price, and this is probably the model I would recommend for most people because it has thread networking support for HomeKit as well as Ethernet. So if you're using streaming, I typically use Ethernet with that. You don't have to, but it's nice to have that. The first thing that's a little bit different is the box. They've actually shrunk it down quite a bit. So you'll see it's a little bit different there. Nothing huge, but some different writing there. Just wanted to share that quickly. Now let's go ahead and open it up. And on the back, you can see the price. It says Apple Home Hub, do more with Apple devices, cinematic quality 4K. So let's go ahead and open this. So we'll take off these pull tabs. There we go. And let's open it up. So here is the Apple TV itself. We'll set this aside for just a moment. Let's see what's in the box this time. And so nothing here. We've got our power adapter. So you've got the adapter to the wall that just plugs into the back. And then it looks like our Apple TV remote and nothing else. We don't have a charging cable this year. Last year they included a charging cable to charge the remote. This year we don't have it, although you probably already have one from your phone. So let's see what we've got for paperwork. Nothing really exciting here. Just some Apple TV quick start guide and your warranty card. Let me set this aside and we'll open the rest up. Now let's pull off the little pull tab back here and we'll unwrap the Apple TV. There we are. And this is a little bit different than last year. It's got a slightly different design. So here is the last generation. You can see the new one is a little bit smaller. It no longer has TV next to the Apple and it's about 12% thinner and 50% lighter. It no longer has a fan inside. So you can see the new one on the right. If we look at the bottom, again, there's an Apple on the old one with some vents. And on the new one, there's nothing here. There's no vents whatsoever. So it's definitely a lot lighter. And that's thanks to the new chipset inside. It has the A15 Bionic with four gigabytes of RAM. So that's an update in itself. And apparently they need less thermal control for that. It's a more efficient chip, but you can see overall, it's definitely a little bit thinner. It's a smaller box. And on the back, it looks very similar. So we have ethernet, we have HDMI on the far right, Ethernet in the middle with our AC adapter on the left. If you don't have the $149 version, you don't have the Ethernet in the middle. On the old one, it's just in a slightly different order. But again, it's much different. I don't think the weight or size really matters. It's just easier to hide this time around. Now let's take a look at the remote as well as that's been updated slightly this year. So we'll go ahead and open this up, see how we can take this off here. Looks like we can just slide the remote out. And the remote itself shouldn't be too different. We'll compare it in just a moment, but this year it's USB-C. So it's charged via USB-C, which is great. I think you're going to see this pretty much on everything of Apple's pretty soon. And you'll see here's a USB-C cable from Apple and it plugs in and charges without a problem. So it looks like that will work. And last generation, we had a lightning charged Apple remote or Siri remote. So you can see here, they look very similar on the front, not too much different. On the top, it's basically the same. On the back, again, the same. And then on the bottom, the only difference there is lightning on the old one on the left, USB-C on the right. So you'll see that's really the only difference as far as physically on this device. Now we also have HDR 10 plus support this year. So if you have a Samsung TV that supports that, I actually use an LG and just use Dolby Vision. That's still included, but we just have that upgrade. So let's go ahead and connect it and see what it's like. I have the Apple TV connected and it's telling me to press the button on the remote. So we'll do that. See what happens here. There we go. It says hello. And now we'll select our language. So we'll go ahead and select English, but you can select, of course, whatever's relevant for you. And then our region. So United States. Give it just a moment here. And now it's talking about data and privacy. We can click continue or learn more. 
and now it says set up your Apple TV. We can use our iPhone to set up our Apple TV. So it says set up your Apple TV. We'll tap on setup. It'll say connecting. We'll give it just a moment. And now we put in the code from the Apple TV to the iPhone itself. And now it says setting up your Apple TV. Of course, you can do this manually if you want to. We'll give it just a moment to complete. And it says setting up Wi-Fi. So it's taking the Wi-Fi from my iPhone and easily applying it to the Apple TV. Of course, if it's Ethernet based, which it will be once it's connected to my main TV, then it will just use that. You can change those settings later on. Now it's setting up iCloud. So again, we'll give it just a moment. Now it says setting up security. So we'll give that just a moment. Also, one thing I wanted to point out while it's being set up is it does have a little indicator light, just like the other Apple TV on the front to let you know that it's live and active. Now on the iPhone side, it says use remote on your iPhone, tap done to open the remote and continue setting up your Apple TV. So if we tap on done, we can use this remote just like we could on any other Apple TV. And now as we go down, you'll see it says require password, always require after 15 minutes or never require. I typically like require after 15 minutes. We'll tap and continue and let me switch back to using the remote itself. Now it says settings from your iPhone allow Siri to use your voice input, contacts and location. Apple will not use your audio, allow apps and so on. So we can customize or we can just click continue. We'll go ahead and click continue. Now it's asking us if we want to sync everything across the Apple TV and I do. So we'll go ahead and click turn on. And it says, where is the Apple TV? Home, office, or old house? So we'll go ahead and click home. Where is the Apple TV? And you'll see it says home theater, kids entry, or wherever you'd like to put it. We'll click home theater. And we can see the world. It says with the aerial screensaver, you can enjoy HD video of beautiful locations from all over the world. I always enjoy these. We can select to automatically download them or not now. I'll use those. And then also we have app analytics, very similar to what we have on an iPhone. You can share those or choose not to share those. You have to agree to the warranty, which is one year. Again, we have to agree to terms and conditions. And now we're at the main home screen. So you'll see it looks the same as before. It will probably take a moment and you'll see all of my apps here are automatically syncing and just showing up by themselves. So this will take a moment to set up You'll see YouTube is installing. And again, it's taking just a moment to get that set up. So we'll give it just a moment to complete and then we'll take a look at everything else. And so let's go into settings while it's actually syncing. So within settings, we have general, of course, and this should have some different options, not only for networking, but also for things such as video and audio now with HDR 10 plus. So you'll see format. We can select whatever we're using depending on what the input is. Of course, you can change this and based off where I'm recording this from, it's going to be a little bit different signal, but you'll see that's the different signals there or formats. If we go back, we can go down to audio output. You'll see here. And then of course you have your audio output settings, basically the exact same thing as before. If you have HDR content available, you'll be able to use that. You can also color balance and fully calibrate this. And then you've got all of your regular settings. So not a whole lot different here. Of course, you'll have all of the new accessibility features that come along with iOS 16 or tvOS 16. So if we go in here, we have voiceover, zoom, hover text, display, motion, audio descriptions, and more. So all of the things you've come to be familiar with. Now let's go back here and everything feels nice and quick. So I don't really see any issues as far as speed. Of course, it's still installing apps. Let's give it just a moment and we'll try a game as well. Now, while we wait for all the apps to install, let's go ahead and pair the Xbox controller. This is an Xbox Elite Core controller. You can use PS4, PS5, or other Xbox Series S and newer controllers as well. So let's go ahead and go into settings here. Under settings, we've got remotes and devices, and then we can pair this. So other Bluetooth devices, go into Bluetooth, and let's go ahead and see if we can pair this. So we'll turn it, turn it on here, hold the little button on the top. The game controller is blinking fast. And if we scroll down, you'll see it has an Xbox wireless controller. We'll go ahead and pair that. Pair, give it just a moment. 
There we go, we're connected. So now we can use the Xbox controller as well. It says it's connected and let's see, we can use the B button to go back just like we would in a game and then go around and see what we've got. So it's still installing apps. Let me give it a moment to do that. And once they're completed, we'll just try a quick game and see how this works. Everything's finished now. So now we can go into a game. Let's just see how quickly Jetpack Joyride loads. We'll give it a second here. And this is the first generation, but we'll go ahead and hit continue. Now we're in Jetpack Joyride. Let's go ahead and hit start, nice and fast here. And of course we can just play using the controller. Of course we could use the other controller as well. If we press and hold the home button, let go, we'll go home. And also let's try a racing game. Let's see how quickly this actually loads. It's the first time loading on here, so it may have to download a bunch of data. We'll give it just a moment to do that. Now it's telling us how to play using the controller. It's all the tutorial and now we're in. So let's go ahead and see if we can just play as fast as possible here. And let's see how fast it loads. This will just give us an idea. I would expect it to be very fast. And one thing to note is the device itself isn't very warm at all. So the Apple TV stays nice and cool. I've got my hand right near it. It's nice and cool still. And you can see here's the beginning of this game. So it's loading nice and fast, looks okay. It's not the greatest one out there, although some people prefer this one. And you'll see it handles nicely, frame rates are great. And again, if I hold the, the home button, go home, it works quickly. Of course, we can go into YouTube and it's nice and fast as well. So we'll do that. And I'm not signed in, so we'll just search for Zolotech. And of course, you can use the microphone on the side of the remote, press and hold, Zolotech. It's kind of right, you get the idea. And we can go into one of my videos here. So if we go into this one about Mac OS Ventura, you'll see here's my video and it's playing just like you would expect. Press back, you can go back, press and hold, you go to the home screen. So it's basically everything you've come to expect from Apple TV, not too much of a difference. I don't notice really much of a speed difference, depending on what you're doing, of course, that's going to make a difference, but it seems to be nice and fast. Whether you're opening apps for the first time, like Apple TV here, and that's about it. And we'll confirm on the device. We have to confirm it's me. First time we go into that app and we're in the TV Plus app. So just as you would expect, it's nice and smooth. I typically use it with Dolby Vision HDR and have no issues. So that's everything with this year's Apple TV. Smaller design, lighter weight, a little bit more compact and no fan, and then additional support with USB-C. Not a huge change, but it's nice that it's upgraded. These are very future-proof. They seem to last years without a problem. So if you have last generations, I don't know that I'd upgrade. However, if you want a new one, it's nice that they've lowered the price. So let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Of course, if you have any other questions, I'll try and answer those. And if you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper I had in this video, of course, I'll link that in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.